myself important, yes. And I want to, yeah, I want to see where I'm going live. I said live on Facebook, but I can't see anything. Oh, now it was already there. Okay, okay. Lily's personal meeting room. Um, Lily's, Lily's weekly live, I'll call it. Lily's weekly live. So meeting description. Um, learning by doing. Learning by doing. And we'll share on my own timeline. Yeah, okay. And it'll be public. Right. So no, but I want to see it, right? I want to see what's going on. So um, close this one. And I'm already live. So this is, uh, uh, I, I don't see what's going on. So got it, live streaming. Okay. So and let me just check the sound. Live, so so I'm good. All right. So here I am. It's Friday morning. It's 10 o'clock. And I've got this Facebook group called Learning by Doing. Australians, when they talk and finish a sentence, often go up at the end of the sentence, which means you think they're asking a question. And the way I just went up now, learning by doing, was as if I'm asking you, is that right what I'm saying? When actually it's learning by doing. Statement, right? I have this Facebook group called learning by doing. And the thing is, when I live stream into my group, only my group members see it. Now, I started the learning by doing group a while ago because I've been doing so much voluntary work. My mentor tells me, my mentor for business actually I'm, I took up this mentoring course and am now a mentor for people who want to get a job at the UN and it was my mentor that really helped me and supported me to recognize and understand a lot of points she's really told me I need to focus and I'm realizing that because I don't even remember the beginning of this sentence that I was going to tell you about she says, if you are not earning money in your business, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. I have hundreds of hobbies. I have videos, photos, blogging, vlogging. I serve the Women's Federation for World Peace International, the United Nations. The Women's Federation at the UN in Vienna. I'm in a team with the UN of the Women's Federation in with Geneva and New York and South America. I support the Vienna International Centre Toastmasters Club. I support my husband in family forum activities. We work to promote healthy, thriving families and relationships between the generations. They're all my hobbies, right? My business is coaching people who want a job at the UN. And what I wanted to talk to you about today, it really fits into learning by doing. So I will link this video into my learning by doing group and i'm posting it at this time when i typically live stream for learning by doing however it i was having the feeling that the learning by doing being a hobby because it's all this free stuff i do the webinars about how to reduce duplicates in your friends list how to post a video onto Facebook, how to work on Easy Speak in the Toastmasters management program, all of these things. They're all stuff that I did out of my passion to want to help. So they're my hobbies because nobody paid me anything for it. 
but I, I never ask the price. That's the other thing. When I don't ask, when I don't name my price, then I can't expect to get any money for it. And fact is, I'm feeling totally okay. I'm living in abundance. I don't have to be paid for every little thing that I do. All these other thoughts going through my mind. Mothers. I'm a mother of five boys. And I'm not saying that I didn't get paid for anything that I did. I am so grateful for having five sons. Nothing, nothing, no money can ever make up for that. I did not really make a clear list of what I want to talk about, but I jotted down a few points just to see that I cover what I really want to cover. And I really am all over the place. So yeah, maybe I'm also a little bit nervous. I wanted to talk to you today in my learning by doing group because I have set it up and I was thinking uh, that's not leading towards my job, my business. My mentor tells me your business should work for you, not you should work for your business. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to focus. I have to set up my business first. And then I'll have all the time and, res and resources to do all the other stuff to support my hobbies. However, I've had a realization. My vision, my job as a mentor for people who want to work at the United Nations is fed by my passion, my belief, my inner conviction that we all fit together. We're all here for a reason. We can all learn from one another. I've had the privilege of working at the United Nations. I have the privilege of being able to support my colleagues who are still working at the United Nations. You may have seen the excerpt that I posted from our Toastmasters meeting on Tuesday. We had the AGM, the annual general meeting, the elections for the new executive committee for the Toastmasters Club at the United Nations in Vienna. It was an in-person meeting, so I went to the VIC for that meeting. And it was fairly typical that the seven executive members were elected and I was in the background. However, the president, the current president, made reference to the fact and I was a bit surprised the wording she used. She said, Lily will always be there for us, supporting the activities. And honestly, nobody else is doing the videos, the YouTube channel, and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. So I'm thinking, well, will I really always be there? So the one challenge that I'm thinking about is I really want to train somebody to, to let somebody else know about the, that. So that's another hobby. Okay. So if you're, if you are already at the UN, if you are working at the United Nations in Vienna, join the Toastmasters Club. And if you're interested in technical aspects, I can show you the ropes and you can perhaps get a little bit more involved in those aspects. 
which is a lot of stuff that I'm the only one doing. Never mind, it's okay. I'm, as I said, I'm happy to serve the people who are serving the world, and that's how I'm also serving the world. So, what I'm telling you now, it's actually, I, I've often said in my blog, which I haven't written for a long time, that I write my blog for myself because it's my exercise in in figuring things out, in contemplation. It's like a meditation for me. And what I'm telling you now is that my work for the Toastmasters Club at the United Nations is a part of my passion, of my identity, of my contribution to serve the world. And in my mentoring, I am looking to mentor people who are also as passionate as I am about working for the United Nations serving the people who serve the world with that conviction that we can make a difference. Guess what? We really can. The limitations are all up here in our mind. The limitations are all my concepts, my ideas. I'm not good enough. Who cares about me? What have I got to say? Who's going to look at it? Well, if I had not gone live right now, you would not be seeing this. If I had not channeled it into my public timeline, you would not see this. What I'm dealing with is it's called visibility. People on mentoring programs in, in the circles that I've been moving in my in the program that I'm participating in as a mentee. It's for people who are learning to set up an online business. And one of the most important ways to start is to gain visibility. People need to know who you are, what you do, and get a feeling for you. So when you watch me on the video, you'll decide, oh, I can't stand that accent. I don't like that lack of professionalism. Whatever, you may like or not like what you see, and that will determine whether we can relate to one another or not, whether you're attracted to work together with me or not. So that's the point of the video, have me. So in the video live streaming, it's a matter of the visibility is not just getting on your nerves and posting something. Oh, okay, her again, just go over to the next one. It's a matter of tuning in and figuring out, is this somebody that can help me? Can I gain something by listening to this person? And do we resonate? Are we soulmates? Can I learn anything from this person? So my job as a mentee is to find somebody who is where I want to go. And I have found a wonderful mentor who is dedicated to selling with heart her whole mission in life is to help people to find their essence and show it so that they can serve the people who are just waiting out there to be served and to initiate that exchange of energy that really fulfills them. 
on both sides, them as mentors and their mentees. And I'm so grateful to my mentor. I'm especially excited because I've been watching a few the, the Facebook entries and a video about a conference coming up where my mentor is also speaking. And it is the 50 Nations 50 Speakers event in Nuremberg in Germany this weekend. So it's true, I've, I've got a lot of things that I'm thinking about that I'd like to share with you. So let me go through a little bit. My, my next to do list is update my homepage because I have somebody already waiting for that next appointment that I'll be making next week for mentorship. And I've been busy attending a conference in Prague. Prague is where my father was born. And I visited my grandmother and relatives in Prague the first time I came to Europe last century, before the fall of communism. And my father said he left Czechoslovakia because of communism. I came back to Czechoslovakia then when my first son was born. And we went to visit my father's sister and spent Christmas with her, or it was Christmas Eve, I don't think it was actually Christmas Day, but it was Christmas time, it might have even been Christmas Eve, and it was when Václav Havel was elected as president, as the first free president in Czechoslovakia. And I was so moved to tears because my father told me how he had left Czechoslovakia because of communism, and there I was 40 years later back in of 40, yeah, nearly 40, yeah, it was 40 years later back in Czechoslovakia as the first free president was being inaugurated. So this trip in to Prague last week together with my husband was a little bit of a, a reflection on my father's life, on the significance of our, of our course, of our life course. I was born in Australia because my parents met in France and moved to Australia. And then I was back in Prague and it's, it's just an acknowledgement of, of the lifespan of the circle of, of life, of the experiences. We were in an area where I knew my father had grown up. I remember him talking about this particular suburb. So I just had to think of my father. And the conference that we were attending was about family values. And we are passionate about family values. Everyone comes from a mother and a father. So whether you know your father or not, we are all the product of a relationship between our mother and father. Joseph and I are absolutely committed to true family values. And we believe in the blessing as the beginning of a blessed family life. And this conference was about blessing and family, not only bringing people to literally receive God's blessing on their relationship, but to then also focus on fulfilling true family ideals. And what was so beautiful about this conference was that one of our sons was key in the in the staff in the organizing in the participation in the management in the organization of of this conference together with his lovely wife 
So we were very, very grateful to be a part of that. And if you've heard any of my lectures on the United Nations and my passion for finding the right people to mentor, to get a job at the United Nations, you may have recognized and understood that my passion is to find people who can relate to the concept of True Parents United Nations. Interdependence, mutual prosperity, and universally shared values. That's what the United Nations represents to me. I recognize that the United Nations is a, a secular institution. It's made up of the member states, of representatives of 192 countries worldwide and hired paid staff members. I was working for the International Atomic Energy Agency as a staff member. I had to sign a staff agreement, a confidentiality statement, to support the vision of the IAEA as the international organization beyond my own personal identity as an Australian. Now, I am still Australian. However, I've been living here in Austria now for longer than I ever lived in Australia. Reminds me of my own mother. My mother actually became Australian, but I remember the, the conflict that she went through the first time she came back to Czechoslovakia on her Australian passport, because the, the, the difficulties, the struggles after the war, war is never good for anybody. When I think how long it took my own parents to recover, from that trauma of having to leave their home country and make a new beginning in Australia, they, they did. They left everything behind. We see today many people going through exactly the same situation. Gosh, you know, how long do you want to listen to me? I could go on for an hour and that was not my intention. An hour is maybe the limit, but I was telling you about my belief that the United Nations needs to have that aspect of a parental heart. That means taking responsibility. That means not having the attitude of exploitation, of trying to take from others. We've come to recognize and understand that a lot of the Christian missionaries or even perhaps the Commonwealth in or many other countries in their exploits, expeditions worldwide, going out into the wide, big wide world, went with the mindset to literally exploit, to get the resources that they need for the home country. Thinking that by teaching these savages Christianity that they were helping save the world without any respect for the culture and the spirit of the land and the people where they were plundering Many things have totally reversed and gone in the total opposite direction. I think it's a, probably a little bit like the feminist movement. You know, the feminist movement definitely had has a place. It, it's important to recognize women have been disadvantaged and we need to catch up and 
appreciate all people. And sometimes the pendulum, well, always the pendulum swings. And sometimes we take stock at the other extreme and it's still not balanced. And when we recognize and understand that history also moves in circles, goes round and round and the pendulum swings back and forth, yet life is in motion. So in my learning by doing, perhaps today I'm spending too long Maybe I'm exposing too much of myself. However, I believe vulnerability and authenticity are the ways to honestly connect, reach out, make a point and get things done. I believe we need much, much more honesty and communication. And that is how we will literally connect and manage to do something. So let me just mark off the points I've talked about. I told you about Prague and blessing and family. So when we got back from Prague, my brother Eric, who is a Catholic priest, a rector of a seminary in Sydney, came to visit. He's spending a month in Rome and came in, flew in on Wednesday morning and flew out early this morning. And it was lovely to see him and to share with him. And for those of you who don't know, yesterday was the feast of Corpus Christi. Here in Austria, it's Fronleichnam. It's a public holiday. And I could never understand what this feast of Corpus Christi really represented. So I asked my brother and he told me that it was actually the Catholic reaction to the Protestants who claim that the consecration in the mass is only a symbolic consecration. In other words, when the Catholics give you Holy Communion and say, this is the body of Christ, the Catholics believe this is the literal body of Christ, that the ceremony within the mass is when God comes down and turns that bread into the body of Christ. For the Protestants and all the other non-Catholics, that is a symbol of Christ. And Eric told us later on grounds of my question that he did a bit further research and he said it was actually, I think the 13th century, he said, I didn't do my research. He said that it actually started here in Vienna, in Austria. For me, the experience yesterday, we went to a park in the morning where there was a mass to celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. Now, I know that my brother as a Catholic priest is supposed to celebrate a mass every day. And so I was very happy to provide that opportunity for him that we could join in together in this mass. As a Growing up as a devout Catholic, when I joined the Unification Church, I never felt like I left the Catholic Church. It was a progression. It was the next step in the Catholic Church. We pray Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And in the Unification Church, I came to understand Christ has come again. Gosh, this is going way beyond what I was going to do about United Nations and true parents and families, because now I'm witnessing about my, my, my faith. But anyhow, I'm being authentic, right? I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being myself. I can't deny who I am. Anyhow, I was really grateful that we could share this experience yesterday with Eric. And then there was a great procession and they went on to the streets. Now, I've been living in Austria over 30 years and there are a number of public holidays, Catholic holidays, where people get a day off work and my personal feeling was people aren't even religious. They're not even serious. So I don't understand why they demand the 8th of December, the 15th of August, 
the the, the certain days, the so Thursday, the Ascension Thursday, and today, the, uh, yesterday, the Corpus Christi as public holidays when the people don't even go to mass. So I was, I was really overjoyed yesterday to see there were so many people in the park at the mass. And then when the people were actually on the streets and blocking the traffic so that even the trams couldn't go by, I was, I was totally gratified. I thought, okay, well, that's, you know, if you're going to have a public holiday, then at least let it be celebrated for what it actually is. And don't insist on, on your secular privileges if you're cashing in on the religious holidays, okay? Yeah, that's something else that, um, that was really nice about sharing with Eric. And we woke up early this morning and called a, a Bolt taxi for him and he made it safely to the airport and onto his flight back to Rome where he is also involved in international communities, working for world peace in his way. The other thing I wanted to mention was that my mentor is speaking at this conference in Nuremberg, and they have also referred to it as United Nations, 50 speakers, 50 nations. So the whole talk is about coming together of different nations. So my contribution is way all over the place, every 360 degrees in all directions. But I can also imagine contributing in some way with more focus and preparation and a time limit. You know, this is my time. I'm on my Facebook account, on my Zoom account. I could speak here all day <laughs> and I don't see any comments. So I guess nobody's watching now. So if there's anybody out there and anybody watches now or later and now after this long speaking if you have you know who's going to watch this long when i'm talking so long maybe i can edit bits out and, and use them later for a for a different presentation but it's not difficult for me to talk as you can see where it's sometimes maybe it's just because i'm on my own and i i feel like I know I'm talking to you, yet I know I was at in the situation, even even in the meeting in Prague, when there's a when there's a big group of people, a lot of people talking, it's not that I don't like to talk to people live. It's I don't like when you can't really relate personally. When there are so many people talking, or one person is dominating, or there's a lot of background noise, and I can't hear what somebody's really saying then then I get frustrated I get upset I don't want to I don't want to be in uncomfortable situations where I can't even hear what you're saying what you're telling me so I love the one-to-one -one. that's why I have my calendar open for personal interview time for meeting with people I do my mentoring on one to one, my mentor does small groups, and we have the times where we can communicate with each other, and we also communicate on Facebook. So it's just a matter of finding your right balance. Can you relate like this, or do you prefer like this? So this is an, I'm actually really working on developing, identifying my own issues because. I recognized in Prague that I did not want to take the stage. I mentioned in one of my videos, I did not take the leadership position. It wasn't my meeting. Not my, not my, not my meeting, not my responsibility. But if you ask me to take responsibility, I will. And I'll do what I promise, what I said that I would do. I've told you about family, I told you about Toastmasters, the nations, and I'm talking. So that's probably enough for today. I'm talking about learning by doing. I have a channel, I have a, a Facebook group called Learning by Doing, where I have been posting live streaming Friday mornings. So it looks like I'm, I've recommitted myself to doing that Friday mornings, 10 o'clock 
I'll be live streaming and anybody watching live can comment live. There's no live chats at the moment, but feel free to do a hashtag replay if you're watching this and send me your feedback. If you're interested in working at the United Nations, then take a look at my Dream Job UN Facebook group. There you can watch the replays of the workshops that I've had over the past five weeks. And what I've talked to you about today is the fact that personally, I believe that the United Nations will really only function efficiently when we take mature responsibility, grow into a position, into a parental position, recognizing that we can help one another with a parental heart. And when we serve each other with a parental heart, then we can literally do something very, very substantial in raising others up and helping them also to develop the concept of giving and receiving and serving, because I truly believe it's through service that we grow the most and that we can accomplish the most. So please join me live next time so that I can have a little bit of interaction. And have a great week, a great weekend. And thank you for watching. See you then.